video. If you didn't know what that was, that was a triathlon. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, is that a four-mile swim? Four-mile swim, 26.2-mile run, and a 32-bike ride. 120-mile, right. So four, four 26.1 and 100-and-some-mile bike ride. That wasn't just a day out in the park. That was an amazing event. And wow. And that's what our Heavenly Father does for us. If we let him, you notice that young man enjoyed the ride. Are you enjoying your ride this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Do you love the Lord this morning? I, I don't know about you all, but I just love God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And before we go any further, something I didn't do the last Sunday, but I, I really wanted to recognize something and I didn't ask him and I don't want to embarrass him, but I'm going to anyway, but. Uh, I'm going to ask that Mr. and Mrs. is it Jane, Jamie, James Shively, right? Got it right. Why don't y'all stand? <laughs> Our newlyweds, praise God for them. I am so proud of them. Amen. I didn't want to embarrass you, but I did. So now you owe me one. <laughs> Just like everybody else in the church. <laughs> if you got your Bibles, go with me to Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. The book of Colossians. Colossians 3:12. If you're there, say amen. If you're not, say wait one more minute. <laughs> and it says this. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, vows of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, Meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against, even, against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body and be ye thankful let the word of christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and in hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the lord and whatsoever ye do in the word or deed do all in the name of the lord jesus giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Praise God. Now, now the writer wrote this uh, after he just really just, I mean, pounded us with some word. He, he says before this that we've got we've to put off all the anger, wrath, malice, blaspheme, uh, filthy communication out of your mouth. Don't lie and all this. So I came in in the good part of the word. Amen. I came in in the good part. But God has poured in my spirit this morning about this word in verse 12. And it says, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness and long suffering. And I begin to think about this word. It says, put on. And I thought, okay, I know it says put on the armor of God. And I, and I know we can read uh, that we've got to put on. But I, I begin to think about, uh, number one, is it said the elect. And that's, uh, you know who the elect uh, are. That's the chosen of God. So uh, before I can preach what I need to preach, I need to ask you this morning, are you the chosen of God? 
Are you truly uh, 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 standing here this morning, uh, uh, sitting here in his presence, uh, knowing that, yes, uh, I am a child of the Most High God? If you can answer yes to that question, uh, then maybe you need to step forward, uh, and now's a good time. You don't have to wait for an invitation. You don't have to wait for me to stop preaching. All you have to do is come. Uh, I'll continue to minister, or I'll stop uh, and pray with you. But the first all, you need to understand uh, that just like the video, uh, your Heavenly Father is wanting to push you through every barrier in your life. Uh, you, you, uh, you have to realize uh, uh, that God Almighty uh, designed you uh, that He could love you uh, and that you could love Him back. Uh, you have to understand that you're not some uh, has-been, uh, uh, was, or, 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 or a mistake. or You're none of those things in life. God created you for a purpose and he called you to be his elect. Now listen, you need to understand as well that in order for you to come out of where you're at and get to where you need to be, it comes with repentance. It comes through confessing Jesus Christ and him Lord. The Bible says that salvation is made through the confession of the mouth. You have to declare it. No, so right now you need to understand that if you're saved, you need to declare. You, you can just say, I'm saved. If you're not saved, you need to say, I need to be saved. And I know what he's talking about because God uh, has been dealing with my heart. Uh, and I know that there is a change that I need to do. And, and, and that's what we're going to talk about uh, is therefore. Put on therefore. But how many know that before you can put something on, uh, uh, and I think of putting on uh, as getting dressed. But before I can uh, 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 get dressed... I must take off what I have. Before I can put on, the bowels of mercy, kindness, and humbleness of mind, and meekness, and long-suffering, I must remove the things that I had. The Bible tells me in uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, uh, thing, all things are become new. Though, so therefore, the old things has to come off. And I begin to think about, uh, 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 where am I going to go with this, God? How, how is this going to come about? Because uh, I'm not getting it. And I, I, I began to, Lord poured out on me in, in my spirit about Moses. How many knows that Moses was, he, uh, first of all, before he began his journey, he had an identity problem to start with. Because he was born a Hebrew, sent into the Egyptians, raised an Egyptian. His inside was telling him Hebrew, but his outside appearance was telling him, I'm an Egyptian because they raised me, this is my family. I have to ask you, do you know who you are this morning? Do you know who you are? Do you know who, who you, <laughs> I'll say it like that, who's your daddy? <laughs> do you know? This is a good day to know that, amen? It's a good day to know who that, who that father is. Who, who you really belong to. It doesn't matter what your last name is, where you was born at, and, and, and what family tree you fall on. It doesn't matter none of that right now. Right now, I'm trying to get you to understand that the most important thing for you to know in life is you got to know who you are through Christ Jesus. You have to know that. You, you say, well, I don't believe it. Well, there's a problem. You got an identity problem. You're trying to be a creation of, or, or you are a creation of God, but you're denying it. Moses raised uh, up as an Egyptian. And, and, uh, and you say, well, you can't really preach that like that. Oh, yeah, why did he kill the Egyptian? Because he slay a Hebrew. That meant something to him. And, and I'm not going to preach on identity theft or anything. I, I just want you to know 
before I start this. But here is a man that, that, that slayed one of the, his own because he slayed one of his own. <laughs> Moses slay an Egyptian, which was who he was raised to be, because the Egyptian slew the Hebrew because that's who he really is. Oh, but I'm going somewhere. My purpose this morning uh, is to say that no matter who you think you are, you've got to die to the calling of God. You've got to, you've got to put away uh, uh, who you think you are, who you want to be and who you were, and become who you are called according to his purpose. So Moses, uh, he got so frustrated that he just fled the country. He's running around in the wilderness as an Egyptian. Let me ask you this. How many of you has ever found yourself in life and everything you've been taught or dressed with is useless? You ever found yourself, everything from your past, your, listen, you found yourself useless. Can you imagine Moses in the, in the middle of the desert and he's got his Egyptian robe on, his Egyptian uh, jewelry on, his Egyptian crown or whatever they wore or, or, or turban or, 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 or those things uh, dressed as an Egyptian. Uh, mind you, uh, this man had people that gave him baths. Uh, this man had people that rubbed oil on him. And now he's out there going, now do I eat that? Cactus or, no, maybe it's that one. All this jewelry and all this makeup and all this dress up had nothing. Had, gave him nothing for where he's standing at right now. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. You found yourself in the dryness of the land you found yourself that seems useless uh, that uh, you can't even understand when i if i go to the desert i don't even know why god created that thing i just go out there sometimes wow dry hot it gets so hot the scorpions can't stand it sometimes i'm thinking god I wonder what Moses was thinking when he's standing there. I am Moses. Oh, yeah, over who? You can't be nothing even. The fire ants won't even come out of the ground. Somebody this morning, you're hearing this word. Somebody here, you're at a place where you can't, you, there is nothing Nothing around you. You can't be ruler. You can't be leader. You can't be nothing that you uh, uh, are called to be. Because why? You have found yourself in a place uh, to where it seems like everything in life from now is useless. Uh, but I want to tell you uh, that, listen, uh, your past uh, is not void. Uh, your past was for a purpose. Uh, and we'll get there, hopefully, uh, if God allows. Uh, but I want you to know uh, that Moses uh, is running around in in this desert uh, uh, fearing uh, and fleeing from a Pharaoh uh, and he's standing out there and he's looking going uh, I can't remember which uh, which which cactus I can get water out of uh, I can't remember uh, where how is it I can dig down and get a certain uh, uh, a root uh, that brings me no I don't remember none of that why because everybody did it for me One day he stumbled up on a well. Good day. And here comes some sisters herding sheep. And here comes some shepherds herding sheep. And normally the shepherds would overpower the sisters and, 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 and rule over them and take the water and, and, and be on. But Moses uh, is like, I don't care who you are, what you think. I, I don't even know where I'm at right now, but I know what's right. And you're not going to do that. 
So he stood his ground uh, and he drawed the water. Uh, oh my goodness, uh, m imagine that. Uh, that he coming out of a wilderness and now he's got introduced to work. Come on. Ain't nobody there to draw the water for him. Oh, that'll get you now. Ain't nobody there to hand it out. There ain't nobody there that can answer your question. There is, uh, there's nobody there that uh, can give that satisfying word that can uh, uh, just uh, 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 wave the wand and bling, everything's okay. But he knew what was right. Those ladies go back, tell their, that, tell their dad, and he's like, well, where's he at? <laughs> they done left him. <laughs> yeah, he's still in the wilderness. He's still back there. Go get him. Listen to this. Now Moses is going to be introduced to a different lifestyle than ever he had ever been raised in. Now he's got a, he's, uh, can you imagine you're a stranger in, your, in a land uh, with strange people? And Moses even states that uh, at one point. I'm a stranger in this land with strange people uh, and, and nobody around me. I don't know how to fit in. Uh, uh, but listen, uh, can't you imagine when he's running around with his father-in-law because he married one of the daughters and they begin a family and now they got their own uh, uh, herd of sheep and, 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 and things are going good, but yet uh, he can't do nothing uh, uh, because he has to ah, can I do that or when he tries to do something maybe the father-in-law says oh, good day boy you can't do it that way do it this way that ain't how you heard him this way can you imagine the frustration? Somebody knows the frustration because you're already there. Uh, things in life uh, may be uh, working, but they're not working out. Uh, they're not working for you. It seems everything is against you. Uh, it seems, I can imagine, and I know uh, what Moses felt like uh, uh, to be on the, uh, uh, the outside or on the inside. Uh, but listen, remember I told you, uh, your past uh, will not uh, be void that it was for a purpose. Imagine he's already used to being the outcast because he wasn't enough Egyptian to be Hebrew and he was too much Hebrew to be an Egyptian and now he found himself in a strange land with strange people. And listen, maybe you're here and you're, you don't have enough God to be Christian and you don't have enough Christian to be so godly. But let me tell you something. I want you to know that there is a heavenly father who is willing uh, to take you uh, to every extent uh, to get you uh, to the place uh, that you're uh, called uh, according to his purpose so therefore Moses had to take off Egyptian in order to put on he had to take off the royalty, the power. He had to take off the authority and assume responsibility. He had to take off everything he had been raised in. See, this man was a man, a scholar. He was being brought up and taught science and taught all these things on how to design and build. How do you think Egypt was being built? archaeologists and all these things they were being taught this during a day of school where the palm branches was being waved over them and now he's out there standing that deep in sheep going what in the world am I going to do why is it this working I ought to be able to say something and it just worked Maybe you're in a place uh, uh, to where everything worked out for your family. Your grandpa was blessed. Your dad was blessed. Uh, but you can't seem to get it to work for you. It don't seem to be happening for you. Everybody around you seems blessed. Uh, uh, but at the same time, you feel like you're standing in a wilderness. Uh, and you got to put on uh, the elect. Uh, you got to be the called, uh, the chosen. In order to get there, you've got to unbutton your stuff. 
hands uh, and you've got to shed. Uh, listen, uh, you got, I, I even uh, look at the serpents uh, at least once a year. They come out uh, of their old uh, and take on a new. We've got to come out uh, of where we're at uh, and get to where we need to be. Put on therefore on me. It says, put on therefore. It doesn't say try it and see if it fits. There ain't no dressing room of God where you get to say, I'm going to try this, this, this. Take them in there, try them on. Put on, therefore. That means you got to look and say, that's for me. But I'm going to have to get rid of something in order to take on the new. Because I can't put the new over the old. Because it don't work. Put on, therefore. I'm going to have to begin to take off something. I'll go a little more in depth with you. Before you got dressed to come to church this morning... You took off your night clothes. And you're standing there with nothing. Nothing. That's what God wants to see you as. He wants to see you as you. Without a cover-up, without any kind of a, a dressed-up appearance. Uh, listen, I ain't even talking now about your, your physical life. I'm talking about you as a person. God's not interested in what uh, uh, maybe the school system could make you to be. God's not interested in what uh, a counselor could uh, get you to the place to be. God's not interested uh, in getting you to the place uh, where somebody else uh, is trying to steer you there. God wants you to take off your old man. And that way he can clothe you. And with what? He has in store for you. And let me tell you, it is without wrinkle. It is without spot. It is ho God said, be ye holy as I am holy. Uh, listen, it is uh, the armor of God, uh, my friends. Uh, and let me tell you, when God arms you, uh, uh, nothing that stands against you shall prosper. When God equips you, oh, can I tell you, you're saying, well, I can't be a Christian. Why not? Uh, I'm not good enough. Uh, God uh, doesn't uh, 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 call the equipped. He equips the called. Uh, let me tell you, he's already got your weapon and your warfare. Let me tell you, you'll fit right in. Uh, just uh, uh, surrender to him. I begin to think about Paul and how that he wrote one of my favorite passages that most people get confused, but I understand it real clearly. The things that I would not do, that I do. The things that I should not do, or the things that I should do, those I do not. Man, I relate to that. I relate to that. Those things that I should not do. Every time that I get an opportunity to witness. Every time uh, that I get a moment uh, I, 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 that I can distribute God's word. Guess who rises up and says you don't need to talk to them about that. You're going to make them mad. And you're going to get them aggravated. And it ain't going to work. And, and all this. When God gives me vision for the forward movement of the church. Uh, guess what uh, happens to me? 
When people show attitude and all these things that comes with different directions, the pastor backs up and second guesses himself. For a moment. Because when you are insecure about who you are and what you stand for, you'll back up. Moses, when he slew the Egyptian and he went back out on the second day and the two men said, why did you kill him? How, who give you the right to kill him? Are you going to judge us and kill us too? He should have stomped his foot and said, you don't know who I am. But instead, he found himself asking questions that he already knew. Asking questions in a strange land. Let me tell you something. Somebody, where you're at is not far off from where you need to be. Because God has got you. God is pouring out in you. All you have to do is open up your eyes and lift up your head and cry out, Abba, Father. And let me tell you about a God who is full of battle. Bowels of mercies, bowels of mercies, not just plural or singular, but plural. He's got, he's a God that says yes. He's a God that has humbleness. He's a God that carries meekness. He's a God that'll keep enduring for long suffering through the miles, through the raging seas, through the times that you got the impossible. I just can't. I just just can't be overcame. But let me tell you, it said I can. At the end of the message, can. I can do all things. I can do all things. Let's talk about church life. Most people consider it a place of a gathering where you come once a week and you get, stand and lift up holy hands and pray to God for a couple hours and that's it. But let me tell you something. The Bible just taught us, it says that you've got to forbear one another. That you've got to get along. You've got to forgive. You've got to look at somebody and say, I am Jesus. And listen, you are forgiven. Whether you tell them that in their flesh or will you pray, God, I forgive forgive them help me forgive them why because uh, uh, you've got to forgive uh, to be forgiven and when you come to a place uh, where folks uh, are not looking at your insecurities or uh, where people are not looking at your weaknesses uh, where people are not looking at your cannots uh, but they see your cans uh, because uh, in your eyes uh, your cannots uh, prohibit you but in the church's eyes uh, they see your cans uh, because you are here when you shouldn't be. You are here when everybody else says you failed. You are here when society says, you, hey, that is, a, a, that is craziness. Listen, you're in a place where I don't see your can't. I see your can. Every time, church, you make that effort. During your persecutions, during your sickness, during your hard times, during your I don't know what I am moments, I, during your God help me because I don't know where I'm at. I'm like Moses in the wilderness. I don't see your cans. I see your cans. And your cans will lead to your calling. And your calling will lead you to your purpose. Hallelujah. Anybody love the God in the house? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody getting this? Maybe it's for me. Anybody getting this word this morning? Maybe it's for me. But I, there's times I feel like I'm, I'm Moses, Brother Aaron, and I'm standing there. Listen, I, I, there's no doubt. I know that I, 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 even working with my dad, as sick as he's been this week, and having to do the things we've done, listen, I go back and I still remember the days when. The days I used to dread, Brother Mike, when he'd bring that old Ford Haybiller up the, up, the, up the driveway and I'd be like, oh, Jesus. 
We got to fine tune that thing again. Now I cherish those days. Now I cherish those days. God can take where you're at, where you've just come out of, and what you've been doing, and make it for an advantage for you. He'll turn it around. He'll give you mercies you didn't know you had. He'll give you a humbleness you didn't know you possessed. He'll give you meekness that you didn't even think you could even pronunciate. But I like the long-suffering. Me, I'm ready to give up in probably an hour's time. I'm done. Yesterday, I walked out behind that old green building where Dad used to take me and give me a whooping now and then, and I kicked a few rocks and said, God, I can't do this. I can't watch him do this. I can't see him suffer like this. God, let me know. Yes, you can. Now is the time he needs you. Now is the time. He may not know you by name or face every time you walk in the building. But he knows you're there. It may not feel like uh, that God knows your name this morning. It may not feel like that He knows who you are or is even concerned or has not the power to be dad or father to you. But He knows where you're at. He knows the intent of your heart. If you'll surrender, and now is the time uh, that we need surrenderance. Now is the time we need servanthood. Now is the time we need a a body that is not uh, uh, weak and weary. Uh, but we need a body that is strong as Samson and as powerful speaking as Paul and can create miracles uh, as Jesus. God said, yes, you can. And when I thought about that video, I thought, my goodness, yes, yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. It'll work. It'll work every time. But you're going to have to surrender. You're going to have to surrender to God. Listen. It says, above all things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. You know what charity is? It's love. It's love. Oh, my goodness. Sometimes, my brothers, it's hard to love in the middle of a battle. Sometimes uh, in the middle of an attitude adjustment uh, amongst other people and their bad days, oh, it gets hard to love. It's hard to love uh, when somebody else uh, is uh, always at fault. It's always their fault, their problem. I don't know why they got to be that way. Never can be the receiving end, right? But God can take those things and turn them into joy. David prayed in the midst of all of his uh, 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 situations and circumstances. He said, Lord, just restore unto me the joy. The joy. The joy. And what are they saying here? It says, let the wor- and let the peace of God rule in your hearts. To the which also you are called in one body. And be ye what? Whoo. Thankful. Thankful. I still got breath. Thankful. I'm still walking. Thankful. I still got a roof over my head. Thankful. I ain't growling and and, 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 and needing right now. I'm thankful that I still got a parent that loves me. Thankful that I still got, I've got 10 siblings, and guess how many we still got? 10. No matter through all my thoughts about I'd like to become God and choke about half of them. He has those mercies on me. God, I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't be like that, God. I shouldn't be that, that way. I shouldn't act like that, God. But putting on that suit sometimes, my goodness. 
Have you ever done this? You ever tra went into the dressing room and had that perfect shirt, tie, whatever you're trying on, and it's your size, you picked it out, it's what you wear for years. You go in there, and that thing is... <gasps> Uh-huh. So you take it off and go, hmm, they must have missized it. I'll go to the next size up. But you go to the very next size, just one, from 32 to 33. You put them on, and they don't make a belt tight enough. You just can't seem to find. Where am I going with this? Sometimes that, that put on, it don't fit real good. You have to make it a fit. You have to adjust. You have to suck it up a little bit. Because why? The next size is too big for you to handle. And you know what smaller is going to do. Your size is for you. And you have to just fit right in that thing. It, it, it didn't say it's going to be tailored and everything was just going to be perfect and you're just going to look like you know the perfect being walking down the street good day i'm glad it's not that way with my salvation you know why? because sometimes i look like that stuff just hanging off me sometimes i'm about to burst at the seams amen but in order to take it put it on you're gonna have to take something off you're gonna have to give up that pride you're going to have to give up that anger. You're going to have to give up that lifestyle the way you were. You're going to have to come out of the wilderness and enjoy the, the grace and mercies of God. You're going to have to start anew. Like I read to you, the scripture said uh, that you are a new creature in Christ. You're going to have to be... The one that bites nails sometimes. You're going to have to be the one that chews the back part of your lip in two. Trying to keep from saying something sometimes. All this is due to one thing. And it comes down to that change. That transformation that's got to take place. And it's not what you think it is. Most people say, well, I just got to stop doing this and I got to go to church on Sunday. And that's it. I'm done. Friend, let me tell you something. It's by the renewing of your mind. Huh. It's by. If I'll find it. I'll read it. It's my favorite scripture. I can quote it, but I like this scripture. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God putting it on and proving it I can remember when we first started uh, uh, doing the tanks in the army. We had just a regular uniform just like everybody else. And, and, and we get in there and we perform and it, we had t-shirts and uh, just everything was normal. When I got out, you couldn't tell me from another soldier. I was just a different job. But as we going on in technology and the difference of the tanks and the more <coughs> uh, that powerful stuff they put in those ammos and all that, they figured out that we are at risk for burning so they give us a set of cover hauls and it's 97 degrees it's 105 degrees and you got to put on a set of cover hauls they just pretty much give them to us and said here it is you got to wear these well it wasn't working for me because they kept saying you got to put them on. It's part of your uniform. Well, you tell me something's part of, that means it goes with. I'm struggling. These, I'm walking around. I look like Daisy Duke in coveralls. <laughs> I mean, stuff just ain't handling right. <laughs> it ain't working. So, so what I do, I finally go to somebody, and I was like, hey, sorry. 
This ain't working. He's like, you've got, he's like, where are you from, you idiot? I was like, what's that got to do? He's like, dude, you got to take off the uniform. I was like, but they said it's part of. Yeah, to put this on, you got to take this off and you, it'll fit. So therefore, when I took that off, Brother Aaron, I, I mumbled, complained, grumbled. Uh, the rah, 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 for, you know the Fred Flintstone, rock'em, suck'em, rock'em, rock'em, rock em, rock em, all that mumbling. The first time we had a fire, guess who come out of the flames? Untouched. It's a, one night we were maneuvering, and this, this, these set of cover halls, it had built-in harnesses around it. And I always wondered what this for. I didn't get it. There was a handle right there. It's for emergencies. When you grab somebody and pull them out, it helped you. I complained about it, wanted to cut them out. We had a serious accident in a tank one night, and had not have been for that handle, I would have not have got that driver through the hatch. One hand, adrenaline, pulled him out. Why do I say all that? Sometimes putting on therefore isn't easy. It's going, to, it's going to doubt you in your mind. It's going, to, it's going to cause you to complain about what you've got to take off in order to put on. It's going to cause discomfort. It's going to cause you to question. It's going to cause you to wonder. And right now you're already at that point. And now you already know that because of God. Listen at that last verse. It says... <clears throat> That ain't it. Where was I reading it? Colossians. There we go. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of Lord Jesus, giving you thanks to God the Father and to Him. But listen, it says that He's going to give you the peace of heart the peace of heart when everything is chaos you're going to be able to stand and go wow why am i so upset why why isn't this affecting me like others it's because of the peace so i ask you today where do you stand at with our god have you made that conscious decision church are, are you committed Listen, I, I'll be the first to tell you, there's, after a business meeting Wednesday night, there's change coming. Change coming. Are you willing to change? Are you willing? Are you supportive? Are you submissive? Under the church, I ain't worried about that. If you get your heart right with God, those things will come. But this morning, as we stand... I'm going to ask you, <clears throat> have you fully surrendered yourself to that almighty God? We can, we can keep, we can preach and go on and have fun and we could do more stories and we could write, read more scriptures and I could, I could go from Genesis to Revelation this morning and, and trust me, I'm in the mood to, but listen, I, I just want you to understand one thing. That it's not about me this morning. It's all about you. It's all about your heavenly father. It's all about what you have. Where are you? How are you standing? Are you, are you weathering well? Can you feel him pushing you? Can you feel him tugging you through that storm? Do you understand that he is there for you we celebrate father's day today there is no greater celebration than we ought to have right now than for our heavenly father no greater celebration as sister tanya sings this song i'm going to ask you to come if your heart's telling you this morning you've got to come and pray it out you need to come if your heart's telling you this morning that you you need to come and pray or be prayed over then friend that's what you need to do